What's going on guys, my name is Matt, and a few weeks back I showed off an RTX 3080 gaming PC with a budget of $1500. This definitely isn't cheap, but for a system that can run pretty much any game you throw at it, at 4K max settings with 60 plus FPS, this is actually a great value per dollar high end build. Now in that video, I said that if there was enough interest, I would make a step by step guide on how to put this system together, and today I have just that guide for you. I'll be going over each of the parts briefly in this video, but for in-depth explanations and full benchmarks, make sure to check out the original video on this PC linked in the description below. Again, in this video, I'll be showing you how to put this system together step by step. Before you start building your PC, you want to make sure you have all your parts, a standard Phillips head screwdriver, a smaller Phillips head screwdriver for the M.2 screw, and an open area to work in. There are a number of different ways and orders to assemble a system like this, but I'll be going over my preferred method in this video. I like to start things off by grabbing grabbing out the CPU and motherboard boxes, open up the motherboard box and grab out the board itself, the M.2 screw, and the IO shield. Close the box back up and place the board on top of it. This board is the ASRock B550 Pro 4. This is a pretty good value per dollar B550 board that packs in a lot of features. It can house today's latest Ryzen processors and on top of all this I think it looks pretty nice. To get it ready for our CPU all we have to do is bring our attention to the CPU socket at the center of the motherboard and press down and out on this metal retention arm. Then you can hinge this up until it's perpendicular with the board. With that done you can open up your CPU box, grab out the CPU clamshell, then pull out the CPU itself handling it only by the edges, bring the CPU to the socket and line the marked corner on the CPU with the marked corner on the motherboard and lower it into place. Another way to know it's oriented correctly is to line the Ryzen model number up with the socket AM4 text on the motherboard. Once in, you can go ahead and lower the CPU retention arm back down making sure it clips into place. The CPU that was just inserted into the motherboard is the Ryzen 7 3700X. This is an 8 core 16 thread CPU running on the Zen 2 architecture. Now, yes, there were new Ryzen CPUs just announced, but all of those are going to be more expensive, and right now this 3700X provides an amazing value. This chip is great for gaming, streaming, and even 4K video editing. With the CPU installed, it's now time to install our cooler. Another great thing about this Ryzen 7 CPU is the fact it comes bundled with a surprisingly beefy stock cooler. This is the Wraith Prism cooler, which features a number of copper heat pipes, a good sized aluminum fin array, and the best thing of all, RGB. Flipping the cooler over, you can see it comes with thermal paste pre-applied, so there's no need to add our own. Now go ahead and lower the cooler down with the AMD logo facing up. Now start by taking the bottom metal piece and pushing it over the clip. Now do the same thing for the top clip. Once this is done, you can flip over the retention arm, which does take a decent amount of force. Next, locate the CPU fan header located above the CPU socket. Looking at the CPU fan cable, you can see there's a notch on the connector and a corresponding notch on the motherboard header. Align these notches, then press the connector down into place. If you want to be able to control the RGB on your cooler, then go ahead and plug in the USB to RGB connector right here. Next, bring your attention to the four DIMM slots and go ahead and open up slots two and four. With these open, grab your first RAM stick and line the notch in the stick with the notch in the slot and lower it into place. Once lowered in, press down on both ends until it clicks in and the clip snaps shut. Repeat this process for the other stick of RAM. The RAM we just installed is a 32GB kit of G-Scale Ripjaws 5 RAM running at 3200MHz. I sacrificed a little bit of speed on the RAM this time to go up to a total capacity of 32GB versus the 16GB I normally go with. 32GB is overkill for gaming but it also allows for more background tasks and is super helpful in video editing and streaming. It's now time to install our SSD, grab out your smaller screwdriver and unscrew the two screws on the M.2 heatsink, lift it away and grab out this M.2 standoff that came in the motherboard box and install it here. You can install it by hand but I used a nut driver bit which made it a little bit easier. Once this is in you can take your M.2 SSD and line the notch in the drive with the notch in the slot and insert it at a 45 degree angle. Once inserted you can go ahead and hinge it down. Next use the included M.2 screw to secure it in place while you're holding it down. The drive we just installed is a 1TB NVMe drive from Western Digital. This is the SM550 which is a relatively basic NVMe drive but it performs great and worked amazingly in this build. 
One terabyte is plenty to start out with and storage is very easy to upgrade in the future. With the drive installed, you can lower the heatsink back down and resecure it with the two screws we removed earlier. Now set your board to the side and get out your case box. Get the case out and one quick tip is to lift the box away from the case instead of trying to lift the case out of the box. Start by loosening the top and bottom thumb screws on the back panel, then pull back on and lift away this panel. Next get out the accessory box from the drive caddy then reinstall the caddy. Now with the case on its side, remove the four thumb screws then lift the panel away making sure to put it in a safe space where it won't get knocked over or damaged. With that done, grab the IO shield you got out of the motherboard box earlier Earlier, and with it aligned like this, lower it to the I.O. cutout and press each corner in one at a time until they click in and the I.O. shield is secure. Now grab your motherboard, handling it by the cooler, and lower it in I.O. first, then hinge it down making sure the I.O. lines up with the I.O. shield, and you can see the standoffs through the motherboard holes. Next take 9 of the motherboard screws that look like this, and install one in each of the motherboard holes that have a standoff beneath them. Now go ahead and get out your power supply which is a 700 watt 80 plus gold unit from Antec that provides plenty of clean power to the entire system. With the van facing down, insert the power supply like this and push it to the back of the case. Next use the four screws that came with the PSU to secure it to the back. Next unsecure this bundle of wires and now we can start doing some cable routing. Start by grabbing the 24 pin cable that looks like this and route it through this hole here. Now take the USB 3 cable and route it through the same hole. Next take the PCIe power cable and route it through this hole here. Now take one of the 3 pin fan cables and route it through this hole here. Next take the two 8 pin CPU cables and route them through this hole up here. Now take the HD audio cable and route it through this hole here. Take these small front panel cables and route them through this hole to the left and then take the other two fan cables and route them here. Next take a SATA power cable from your power supply and plug it into this connector here which is used to power the LEDs on the fans. Speaking of which, I opted not to plug the fans into the motherboard and just use the built in LED controller which works well and has a number of different color and effect options. Now we can set the case onto its side to start plugging things in. Start at the top left and plug in the 3 pin fan cable right here just like we did for the CPU fan, lining up the notches on both the connector and the header. Next plug in the two 8 pin CPU power connectors, lining the notch on the connectors and the headers and pressing them in until they click and are in securely. Now moving to the right side of the board, grab the big 24 pin connector and press the two pieces together. Now lower it into the connector, lining the notches up on both and press it into place. Below this we'll take our USB 3 cable and line up the cutout in the header and the bump out in the connector and press it into place. Now you can bring your attention to the bottom left of the board, take the HD audio cable or oriented like this and press it into the HD audio header like this with the text facing down. Moving to the right we find two fan headers which we'll plug the two remaining fan cables into the same way we did the other fans. To the right of those are two USB 2 headers, take the USB LED cable from the cooler and route it like this and then plug one of the two headers oriented with the text facing up like this. There's not enough room to route it another way so if you want full control of the cooler LEDs then this is what must be done. Finally to the right of this we'll plug in those tiny front panel connectors. Start by grabbing the power button cable and press it into these two pins here. Directly below that take the reset switch cable and plug it in. Plug in the hard drive LED to the left of the reset switch with the positive also facing to the left. Finally with that done we can now bring our attention to the PCI expansion at the back of the case. Unscrew the top two thumb screws then lift the covers away. Now unlock the PCIe lock clip and grab out your GPU. Lower it in lining the notch in the card with the notch in the slot. Once lowered down press it in until it's secure and the PCIe lock snaps shut. What we just installed is the RTX 3080 Founders Edition which is an absolute beast of a graphics card. To see how it performs make sure to watch the 4K benchmarks in the original video. Now take the adapter that came with the card and press the two 8 pin PCI connectors into it. Then take the adapter and plug it into the card itself. Finally reinstall the two thumb screws we took out earlier. With that done we just have to neaten up the cables by pulling the excess to the back of the case and making all the cables as flat as we can so the side panel will fit back on. Now all you have to do is install the two panels that we took off of the case originally and you're ready to boot your system up for the first time. Before you get into games you're going to need to do a few things on the software side of things. The first is to install Windows. I'm not going to go over the process in this video but I'll leave a link to a guide on how to do this 
this in the description below. With that done, you can boot into Windows to install some drivers. First, head to the NVIDIA drivers page linked in the description, select RTX 3080 and Windows 10 64-bit from the drop-down menus, and press search to find the latest graphics card drivers. Download these and install them. Next, we need our chipset drivers for our motherboard. Head to the motherboard page linked in the description, press support, then download, then download and install the AMD chipset drivers. With this done, there's one more thing to do before jumping into games, which needs to be done in the BIOS. With your PC turned off, press the on button, then immediately mash the delete key until you enter into the BIOS. You need to go over to the OC tweaker and go down to load XMP setting. Press auto and change it to XMP 2.0 profile 1. Now we can go over to exit and hit save changes and exit. With all that done, you are now ready to download and enjoy some games. I hope that guide was helpful or entertaining to some of you out there. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.